John Alzheimer is known as one of our nation's most recognized credit experts. Having worked for 28 years in the credit industry, John has become one of the most prolific speakers about credit and the go-to authority on answers to credit-related questions. Credit Countdown with John Alzheimer. Hey there, John Alzheimer here. I'm a consumer credit expert, and today we're gonna talk about the DTI ratio. What is the DTI ratio? Why am I talking about it, and why should you care? So DTI is an abbreviation or an acronym for debt to income, DTI. And the way you normally see this written in a document is debt to income or the debt to income ratio or the DTI ratio. It's all the same thing, just, you know, there's different choices on how people choose to write that. So what is DTI? Why is it important? Why should you care? Does it have anything to do with credit reports and credit scores? I'm gonna answer all these questions. DTI, the ratio, is calculated. Now you're gonna have to follow me here. It's a little complicated. It's not straightforward. The debt to income ratio is calculated by taking the sum or the aggregate of your monthly minimum payment requirements and dividing that by your gross monthly income. So let's walk through that. So what does that mean, the sum of your minimum payment requirements? So let's say that if you added up all of your reoccurring monthly bills, meaning the minimum payments you have to make on all of your bills, that would be the sum or the aggregate of your minimum payment requirements. And let's just say, hypothetically, just for math, let's say that every single month that number equals $5,000. So that can include your loan obligations, your credit card payments, things like that. You have to make a payment every single month on them. So let's just say, hypothetically, that is $5,000. All right, now we have that. And now let's say you have a really good job, or maybe you and, and a spouse have two good jobs and your income together is, let's say that it's $120,000 a year. So that's $10,000 a month gross. So you do this before taxes, okay? Because obviously you don't keep all that. The government gets their fair share. So you have $5,000 in reoccurring monthly payments and you have $10,000 of gross monthly income. So to calculate the DTI ratio, you take that 5,000 and you divide it by the 10,000 and that yields 0.5 or 50%. That means that 50% of your gross monthly income is already kind of pre-reserved to pay for your monthly reoccurring bills. So lenders use that ratio, that DTI ratio, to determine whether or not you can take on a new debt obligation. and. I can tell you 50% isn't great. According to the CFPB, you need below 43% in order to qualify for a traditional mortgage loan. And obviously that would mean that you would either have to have a higher income or lower monthly payments or some sort of a combination of the two. DTI is what's referred to as a wealth metric, right? So it determines your capability of taking on new debt, not whether or not you're actually going to choose to pay that debt. DTI ratio is not on a credit report and it is not influential to your credit score. And the opposite is true as well. The quality of the information on your credit report is not influential to your debt to income ratio and your credit score is also not influential to your debt to income ratio. Now, that doesn't mean that there's not a relationship between DTI and your credit report. In many scenarios, the lender will use the scheduled monthly payment value on your credit report and they will use that as the numbers essentially the digits in order to, to come up with the sum of your monthly minimum payment requirements certainly there are other ways to do that they can ask you to fill in what your payment requirements are or they can rely on a credit report or they can do kind of a hybrid of both of them so there is a relationship but it's not as if you know you're going to have a better credit score because your dti ratio is good or you're going to have a lower credit score because your DTI ratio is not as good. That's not the case. Target wise, look, you wanna have as low of a ratio as possible because that means that you have more capacity to take on a new obligation in any particular time, which means that you have the ability to make payments on something and, and lenders are going to consider that. So if you have any other questions about DTI, drop them in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. We'll talk again soon.
For more videos and credit tips from John Olsheimer, go to www.tradelinesupply.com.